Steganography is a process of hiding messages within image or audio files. To the normal eye, the image will look exactly like a regular image. Nothing will have changed. Only with the use of a steganography tool can the secret message be extracted. Same with listening to an audio file. To the ear, the file will appear completely unchanged. Only by using the steganography tool can that message be extracted. A steganography tool allows an attacker to set up what is known as a covert channel or a clandestine means of communication. Think of the implications here. When using a steganography tool, an attacker could send messages just by uploading a website or updating a website. They could post an image on their website and that image will appear just like a regular image, but people who know to look for that image and know that it's been modified by a steganography tool can download the image and then extract the message through the steganography tool. We're going to go through an example here with a common steganography tool. There's many out there. There's uh, Steghide, there's some command line tools. This one's called Zao Steganography and it's a very simple application. How it works is you open up this interface. This is all the interface you get. You add a file then you'll load your target file. You'll load the image you want to embed and then you select the file that you want to put into that message. So in this case I've selected a Word document. So I'm embedding this Word document within the image essentially. You can also add encryption so when it's extracted with the use of a steganography tool the uh, person extracting will have to decrypt the message using a password and that's it. Steganography tools are mainly used to protect, uh, to set up those curvert channels and to pass messages without being detected. Honeypots are places or nodes on your network that are designed to attract attackers. They're designed to draw attackers in by showing or simulating data or even providing real data so that the attackers look to that honeypot to exploit first. Essentially it's a dummy network node. So think of the attackers as bears and think of your honeypot as a big jar of honey out, set out purposely to draw the bears to it. You don't want the bears ransacking your garden, you want them just to go for the honey instead. Okay, The garden would be the rest of your network. So with a honeypot you can, there's a couple different methods in which honeypots are used. Okay, You have what are known as research honeypots which are designed to gather information on current attack patterns and trends and these are used by uh, threat intelligence agencies to gather information on what attack vectors attackers are using, you know, what exploits they're going for, what type of data are attackers interested in, and these honeypots are set out basically to observe the bear. So think about having a, a pot of honey on a like a picnic table and then the researchers are sitting behind a blind with some binoculars looking at those bears like oh I see that's how they eat the honey. I get it. So they're trying to learn about the bears or the attackers. Okay. Uh, production honeypot is designed to help protect the network. So the, those are put alongside production servers within a network to draw attackers to them and they may contain dummy data or data that's not quite uh, that's not realistic or they're used to see how attackers are purposely targeting that specific network. Design, the purpose of the production honeypot is to gather information to better protect the network and to draw attackers away from real production nodes. So there's three main types of honeypots. You have low interaction honeypots and these are going to ramp up from low, high to pure in the amount of resources that are required to run them. So a low interaction honeypot really just simulates data. It only has enough uh, functionality to identify the attack patterns in use. It's not designed to gather a great deal of information on the attackers. It's just designed to uh, identify the attack methods being used to attack that honeypot. High interaction honeypots, on the other hand, 
imitate a real system. Uh, they take a lot of system resources and they're designed to gather a great deal of information on the attacker. Pure honeypots are the highest end here. Those are full production systems, okay? They're pretty high risk because you're actually using production data. So if, that, if the attacker successfully attacks the honeypot and you're not able to do anything about the attacker, you're not able to identify the attacker, their detection, their um, masking techniques are effective, then the risk doesn't really have a reward. But there is, uh, with that type of honeypot, you're able to gather a great deal of information on the attacker. And these pure honeypots are usually used with uh, research honeypots. You know, you actually give the attacker information so that they're more likely to uh, target that honeypot and take the bait, so to speak. Um.